Hello again there everyone. Welcome back to section 3.3, our, our third video on uh, vectors. So last time I left you this problem. You had a vector A and B um, the point, and a point 1 here. So you started at point 1. You walked 3 miles due east, which is represented by vector A in the diagram. Then you turned and walked 4 miles due north, which is vector B in the diagram. The question asks you to find the magnitude and direction of the resultant vector that goes from point one, uh, where everything started, to the arrowhead of B, where it ended. So we're going to address this by breaking the problem into two parts. So break the problem into magnitude and direction. So we're going to take one bigger problem and break it up into two little, littler problems. Into magnitude and direction. Okay, so first, magnitude. Now, um, we're told we go from east to north. That means we know that this is a right angle. So that means that we can use the Pythagorean theorem so that r squared, well, let's just skip to r, is the square root of um, the magnitude of a squared plus the magnitude of b squared. So, square root of, let's see, a is 3, b is 4, so r comes out to 5 miles. So, we have the magnitude. So, now what we have, um, if we're to draw this, we have, nope, that's not it. Try that again. Okay, and let's get this line to make it the triangle. So we have a three, four, five triangle, right? We know um, we know this is three, this is four, this is five. We know this is theta. So, we can just, we can use our basic trig. So, we know that the tangent is opposite over adjacent. So, tangent of theta is going to equal the magnitude of B over the magnitude of A, which equals 4 over 3. And when we work that out, we get tangent, the inverse tangent of four thirds, and we get an angle of 53 degrees. Now remember, this is measured counterclockwise from the x axis. That's the typical convention. Sometimes they do it differently, but they should say it if they do, and you should say it if you do. So this. Um, this angle, I just drew the angle, but it's measured this way. All right, so, um, you know, the complete answer would be 5 miles at 53 degrees. All right, so now let's um, jump into section 3.3, three. components of a vector. Okay, in our last problem, each vector was along a major axis. The result, however, had components, had parts along those two axes. Right, so, in, in two dimensions, um, to describe a vector, we need, 
we need a um, coordinate system. So let's call this X, call this Y. And we're going to have some vector, get back over here, some vector that we're going to call P. Right, so this is P. Or sorry. Nope, nope, nope. There. It's a point P. Sorry about that. Point P. The vector we're going to call R. And we're going to make it a little r. And we're going to say that this vector r is at an angle that we're going to call theta from the x-axis. All right. So this is a displacement vector. So we have a displacement vector. from an origin, from the origin that we'll call O. We'll put that in there, O. From the origin O to a point P that I put in there already, to a point P And this displacement vector is called a position vector. Of point P. All right, it goes by a different name because it's more specific. You're in this particular coordinate system. So this vector specifies the location of point P relative to the origin for this coordinate system, as opposed to just saying the um, distance and direction between two points. All right, so um, just an aside, R could also be written, and it often is written, OP, meaning going from point O to point P. Right, so the vector r um, has a magnitude that we're going to call a little um, r without the vector, and its direction is the angle it makes. So, and it makes an angle of theta with the x-axis. Okay, so now this vector r isn't completely in the x or completely in the y direction. It's in both directions. So it has a component or a part in both the x and the y directions. Um, a way you can think about this is let's say we had a light shining down this way, okay, on, on this. It would cast a shadow. It would cast a shadow. Um, it would cast a shadow um, let's see here nope didn't want to do that this way and over here 
although that's at the origin already. So its shadow, make this a little bigger, its shadow would be um, in red over here. Right here. So this shadow we're going to call R, no, nah, little r. <laughs> little r sub x, meaning the component, component of the vector r in the x direction. And again, you can think of that as the shadow of it, the projection of this vector r in the x direction. Now, if we shine that light this way, parallel to the x direction, and it hits r, it's going to cast a shadow on the y-axis. So, it's going to go this way. Oops. <laughs> it's going to go in that direction. Okay. And its shadow is going to be from here. Oops. Oh, dear. Well, we'll get that in a second. Its shadow is going to be from here. To here. Alright, so this part right here is going to be RY. RY is the component of R in the Y direction. Okay, so we know that these projection angles are right angles. All right, so we can calculate what Rx and Ry are if we know the vector R and the angle theta. So Rx equals, um, well, actually, let's take this a step back instead of just writing that. Um, let's, let's start from the angle. Let's start from the angle function, the cosine function. Cosine theta, cosine is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite, um, or sorry, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is Rx. Hypotenuse is R. We're just doing magnitudes here. We rearrange this, and we find that the component in the x direction is r cosine theta. So the component of r in the x direction. And um, we do the same thing with sine. The projection uh, in of r onto the y-axis, this is r y over r. And rearranging the component of R in a Y direction gives R sine theta. Okay, so, so this is the X component of vector R, and this is the Y component 
of vector r. All right, and um, remember the Pythagorean theorem, theorem works here because we're dealing with right triangles. So remember that the magnitude of r is going to equal the square root of the squares. r x squared plus r y squared. All right, so you have these three relationships to help you um, work between the components of the vector and the vector itself. All right, so, uh, so let's look at an example here. Uh, which way are we going? Okay, here. So we have um, an x axis and a y axis. We have, um, and we have a point P that's up here. Okay, so point P. Right here. Okay, and it's uh, P is five meters from the origin and P is at an angle of 60 degrees with respect to the x-axis. So, we're going to calculate the x and y components of P. All right, so we have everything we need, right, from the two equations up here. So let's just write it out. Rx equals R cosine theta. In our case, R is 5. Theta is 60, so that equals 2.5. The y component is r sine theta. Our component, the uh, magnitude of the vector is still 5, and the angle is still 60, so sine 60, and that's uh, 4.33. Okay. All right, I'm going to um, set up one more problem, and um, I'm going to leave you with that, uh, to mess with that one. So, here we go. So, we have, uh, we're going to call the vector this time, uh, we're going to call it R. Okay, so this is R. And um, this is theta. This point right here that R ends at is at 5, coordinates 5, 4. We have an x-axis and a y-axis. All right, so um, with that information, calculate r and theta. All right? All right, mess with that, and uh, we'll see you back in video four. Okay, bye-bye.